tonight. Armed airmen ambushed as anonymous authoritative assassin accepts administrative absence. Kansas City Kicker's controversial commencement comments lead to calamity for the Catholic's commentary. Unbelievable Butcher undertakes unusual urological upheaval. See these stories and more of what we're talking about in this week's episode of The Blackman Show. Welcome to the BS. Now let's go. What is good? What is good? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Seven Blackman and this is The Blackman Show, a place where we can dissect the news with a little bit of seven cents, sponsored by the good people at theblackmanshow.com. So make sure you smash that like button like it's the one you love or hate. Hey, either way, I I ain't judging. (laughs) Let's just get it in. Okay, Kansas City, I I think we have a problem. I, I, I know I'm merely a transplant here and a lowly Bears fan. Still looking for a quarterback who can stay consistent, pass over 4,000 yards, and maybe, just maybe, able to consistently hit the out route without getting picked. I I digress. But from an outsider's perspective, it looks like y'all kicker may have put his foot in his mouth. So here's what I'm talking about. It's uh, Harrison Bucker, butt kicking, kicking, kicker of the world champion Kansas City Chiefs and proud Catholic. The man was recently asked repeatedly, apparently, to speak at the commencement of the local Benedictine College in Kansas, where he espouses Catholic beliefs to a seemingly mostly Catholic or Catholic on Easter and maybe Christmas audience. And I'll just say he really hit it out of the park with the hit, starting off easy with a brief attack on the pervasive results of Joe Biden, abortion rights, and euthanasia before telling a man to be men and priests to keep their hands off the babies. So, so, you know, it's a mixed bag. And of course, he didn't want to leave the ladies out, so he told them that they've been diabolically lied to in seeking and looking forward to their next job and or promotions instead of taking on the greatest vocation of being a homemaker. I mean, the very mention of his wife, who he met in middle school when when they both were attending students, right? I, I, I'm assuming. Can, can somebody check on that? But the very mention of his wife brought him to tears. And, and I could get that. I mean, it's a huge sacrifice to be an NFL wife, right? Again, this speech was commencement. Now, if these are the same Benedictine Ravens that we played against once upon a midnight dreary, half of them were probably sloppy drunk while they sat there trying to stay awake. You know what I'm saying? But uh, seriously, it's a Catholic liberal arts college, so that's why Harrison, a devout and apparently outspoken Catholic, uh, was so well received by the crowd. But the problem is, oh, Harrison, um, well, you weren't just talking to the crowd. You, you were, see, um, you were talking to the world, uh, and, and the world seemed to take issue. Look no further than your nearest twit scroll, and you'll see so many people digging into Harrison from as many angles as he can hit the crossbar. And you can take that however you want that to mean. Saying things about how it seems kind of weird that he speak on women being homemakers when his own mother is a physicist working in a cancer department, I believe, at Emory College or Emory University, one of the two, I'm not sure. It's Twitter, so you can never tell how true the facts are and what they what they are. And that's not to say that maybe she wasn't a happy homemaker or stepford wife when Harry was but the wee chauvinist. Now, while I agree on him on gender roles or the vocations, as he called them, I think I would be wrong if I had a college age daughter and I didn't encourage her to push hard in her career. Because, I mean, let's be real. If you at this age, at this graduating age, it's too late to be telling these young ladies to be housewives when they haven't been training in that vocation. Bruh, (laughs) nah, I'm I'm saying, that doesn't mean that they can't get married. It it just means that whoever the guy is, he should make a lot of money. And maybe they should learn to take turns. Now, I will have to say, I agree with the part that he was saying about the men. Now, the men are the backbones of society and do set the tone of culture. And like you, Harrison, I believe 
work and doing the hard things are required to set a standard. I would say in many senses that has been the case in the black community and discouraged for decades at the same time. Men have been deemed unnecessary in some respects. We see it in the older, more popular sitcoms, the lack of strong black male characters on TV and the promulgation of ideologies that make us seem less than. But I also say I'm not sure strict versions of already strict religions is the way to salvation as your promotion of the TLM would indicate. I don't know, I, I just I just think this was kind of a, this was a somewhat, this is a somewhat offensive speech if you're a feminist, but if you're understanding the meaning of community, legacy, and continuing the bloodline, <laughs> you may have interpreted this soliloquy a, a little differently. I'll just say I think it's really cool how you started off talking about, you know, needing leaders to stay in their respective lanes. So, so I, I think it goes without saying that the Chiefs fans will probably want more kicking and less, you know, red pilling. You know, kickers are to be seen, not heard. Unless it's Marquette King. Hey, hey, I, I heard that you good people. How let your boy seven when you slide through KC Mo for real. I love me. Hit me up. And yeah, it's easy to rattle off a bunch of <gasps> Hey man, uh, you woman. Uh, 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 I get bacon. You cook bacon. <laughs> it's easy to do that when you're a millionaire kicker, son of a physicist. But you know, the, the way this economy is set up, uh, shit. <laughs> I may start my only feet shop for y'all any day now. I'm just saying. What did you think of the speech? If you haven't checked it out in its entirety, it's possibly worth a listen to get the full idea of what he's saying to form your own opinion versus listening to mine or anyone else's opinions on the interwebs. I mean, you're a grown up. You've got this. But after checking it out, I'd love to know your thoughts on this and my silly opinion down in those comments. Sometimes I wonder what it takes to make it in America, especially as, as a black man. I mean, I have a little one. I'm raising him to be somebody, to be his own person, to, to not have as cynical a view of authority figures as, as I have. I'm hoping that he won't be as jaded as I have been. And <laughs> I, I'm still working on it. But when we see things like we've seen with regard to Airman Roger Fortson, it becomes difficult to see a way out. Now, for those of you who are unaware, here's what I'm talking about. So we've got a young man by the name of Roger in Okaloosa County in Florida. <sighs> yeah. Now, just earlier this month, he's on a FaceTime call with his girl, right? Who knows if he's you know, in a heated conversation and the conversation is all crazy, but all we know is that he is inside of the home alone. At the same time, somebody outside of the home calls the police and complains about noise who knows if the noise in question is actually coming from roger or, or somebody else who cares all we know is the attack dogs have now been released and now anybody can get it so a single officer shows up mind you this is for a noise complaint right and he bangs on the door but he, he doesn't identify himself or anything like that nothing like a normal person and then he steps to the side you know playing peekaboo roger hears the banger but he doesn't know what it could be for especially considering nobody said anything like you know police open up hey there's been a noise complaint uh, uh something anything but instead the police was you know i, I, I don't know tr trying to get the jump on him what, what, what were you stepping to the side for all of a sudden what, what was you doing Either way, Roger looked through the peephole, but didn't see anybody because the officer once again stepped to the side. So he didn't answer the door, probably because nobody identified themselves, especially with regard to the forcefulness of the initial knock. Roger's probably on high alert. I mean, who knows what other trauma situations, stories he's heard about or had that could be similar to what he's in leading to his response. The second time, the officer bangs slightly louder and states that he's with the police. Now, Roger, seemingly on high alert, probably doesn't think that this is a genuine police call, considering he probably doesn't think he's doing anything to warrant a police visit in the first damn place. The cop didn't establish who he was, nor his purpose from the onset, and perhaps the neighborhood may have had other situations, you know, shady things happening. Anyway, 
All this leads to Roger arming himself before he answers the door. The deputies who shot and killed a black U.S. Air Force airman last week burst into the wrong apartment. According to Crump, who's representing the family, a woman was on FaceTime with senior airman Roger Fortson during the incident. The woman says Fortson was alone in his off-base apartment, and she watched as someone knocked on the door and didn't answer when Fortson asked who it was. Minutes later, there was another forceful knock, so Fortson grabbed his legally owned gun, and that's when deputies burst through the door, saw him with the gun, and shot him six times. The sheriff's office says the deputy shot in self-defense after encountering an armed man. Roger opens the door with the weapon in his hand, but aimed down to show that he's not threatening. With his other hand, he's gesturing that he's trying to halt, pause, stop, whatever. You know, it's like hands up, don't shoot, that, that sort of thing. Stop the commotion. The like you know, to, 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 to kind of get to the bottom of what's going on. And if at this point you're wondering why I'm saying things like likely, seemingly, and, and perhaps, it's because we don't know. Why don't we know? We don't know what Roger was thinking and we don't get to hear his side because of what we do know. And, and what we do know is that the officer saw the door was open, somehow assessed a black man opening a door that he was banging on while holding a weapon as an immediate threat. Therefore, the officer immediately executed the man. Only after firing six shots into the man at close distance did the officer even bother to say anything about dropping a weapon or, I don't know, assessing what else was possibly going on besides the weapon. Okay, so so I've seen the footage and cops trying to justify that they are trained to neutralize threats and all that in the comments. But I don't know, I just find it weird the cops are so able to identify threats in some situations, but can't seem to assess them at all in others. I mean, how many times have we seen stuff like this? How, how many times are cops allowed justification in these shootings of black men where they can readily and conveniently blame their training, which obviously made them brainless automatons, simply acting on a programming given to them? Okay, so we got another black man killed by a reckless cop and his reckless ass activity. On top of that, we've got a reason for it. Threat neutralization. Try that on for size. See, see if that works. Oh, okay. Well, well, if that doesn't fit you well, try this on. Uh -uh. It was self-defense. That's right. See, the cop who, to date, has not been identified in any way, initially said this took place in self-defense because obviously holding a weapon in your hand is just the same as pointing it. Wait, wait, you're, you're, saying, you're saying it isn't? Can somebody check on that? Man, I, I, don't, I don't know. Suddenly that training doesn't seem to be as proficient as they claim. So since that incident, the officer has been placed on administrative leave, right? Shocker. His identity has been withheld while Okaloosa County Sheriff Eric Aiden has promised transparency and accountability. Oh, I, I, I'm sure that transparency will appear anytime now. And that's not to say I want his name out for the bloodlust, energy, and spectacle that such an incident can create. But all things being equal, isn't that what they did for Floyd with, with the officer with Chauvin? Isn't that what they do with all officers? I know they do it when a black cop shoots somebody. So Rogers family has civil rights attorney Ben Crump representing them. And to that, I just have to say, Lee Merritt. <laughs> Where the hell are you? F families are really going through it. And look, they, they don't need legal representation from a man who has a problem saying legal representation. I'm just saying. I don't know his success record, but I know that he's always there when there's an injustice, but we rarely hear about his outcomes. I, 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 I digress. I don't want to step on the black man doing his thing, but just saying. People need justice more than they need representation you know what i'm saying but in addition to that i just wonder what the point of gun carry laws is if in your mind just being black is the offense so anything added to that is just the sauce the the topping to your racist biased unseasoned ass barbecue that you call fine dining why do we have guns for the good or bad reasons if for you, vilification begins with, well, who's holding it and how do we feel about him? Oh no, it's a black man. 
reading the newspaper with a gun safely held in his holster. Shoot him! It's a white man with an AK-47 randomly walking down the street aiming it at people everywhere. Eh, it's too big to conceal. I'm sure he's fine. Now, personally, I'd love to live where we can actually rely on the law to do as we think it should for all parties involved because of its blindness, right? Right? It, the law is blind. Just as, but what we're seeing is people claiming that justice is blind, which allows them to act like they don't see the disproportionality of offenses and their related sentences between black and white people. Y you know, it's those people who say they don't see race. So unfortunately, they can't see how what they're doing is oppressive, offensive, or overall obligatory, but only on occasions outlined by their official overseers. That is, they're the all rights matter because they'd rather not talk about your individual black rights. People, you know, the, the ones that'll break your leg, hear you crying about it, then shoot you to take you out of your misery. Y you know, instead of fixing what the actual issue was in the first place, which was them breaking your leg. I just wish this young man didn't have to die from a so-called blind justice system that will find ways to justify the cop playing peekaboo before taking his life a again for a so-called noise complaint quicker than they will to actually go after the cop for what he did by the way no word on if the cop was even at the right location if roger was the actual party in question or who even called the cops but we do know another black man is dead at the intersection of great cop training you know that kind of turns you into robots um gun laws and of course let's sprinkle in some black in there you know because why else would they shoot the guy in the first place come on man now mind you this is the same police department already known for its swift actions in the acorn attack of 2024. oh you don't remember twas just the february in this very year the year of our Beyonce when Officer Jesse Hernandez and his partner leapt into quick action after arresting a man for vehicle theft, placing him into the vehicle, closing the door, hearing an acorn hitting the car, and the male cop going into decisive action, barrel rolling into the street, even cosplaying, being hit by the offending acorn, but having the mental fortitude to alert his partner to join him as they collectively and repeatedly shot at their own vehicle emptying the first magazine and installing another before realizing the folly of their actions and thankfully leaving the abducted man completely unharmed physically though definitely mentally scarred this is the type of policing that you can be sure to find from the good people of okaloosa county it, it seems cops with the ability to assess judge and carry out convictions in a matter of seconds but taking maybe another second or two to determine the why behind what's going on <laughs> that's just too much like rights a and we trample all over those don't we but i'll leave that with you and, and ask your thoughts on this if if you're a parent how do you prepare your child for a world where his skin may be seen as a sin before he even gets in. If you want your young man to grow up to be all that he can be, and he does that by joining the military, seemingly showing that he's, you know, one of the good ones, as they say, right? So he does all the right things, and he still gets gunned down. How do you justify that in your mind? I mean, if you're the, if you're the cop and the department or the family, how do you, how do you justify that? And personally, I, I know I'd find it hard to sleep. Hell, I do right now already.
So we go from one story about bad cops in the justice system, and now we follow that up with bad judges in the same system. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Almost makes you believe the justice system is a little light on the justice side and maybe a little too gratuitous on the system side. I, I digress. So we've got a man who was facing jail time for a traffic stop that took place in Alabama. <laughs> Of course, the state with a 27% black population and ranking a hot number five out of the worst state education systems. Here's a hint where that is. Um, there are 50 states in, in these United States um, where Alabama is a state, but with them having the 45th worst education out of 50, I, I'm, I'm guessing that this may not be the best placement for a math joke. Uh, moving on. But yeah, Alabama, and most notably the small city of Ozark, may have a bit of a Napoleon complex in the way that it's flexing its power, namely in the municipal courts. So we've got this dude, a black man by the name of Reginald Burks. Uh, can, can, I, can, I, can I call you Reggie? I'm, I'm gonna call him Reggie, I'm gonna call him Reggie. Okay, so Reggie, who's also an aircraft mechanic and father, was taking his kids to school in December. Cop pulls him over, license, registration, whatever. He, Y'all y'all know how traffic stops go, right? Okay, so then the cop says Reggie was speeding, but admits that his radar gun was broken and that he was able to do some quick math in the state of Alabama where the education is 45th out of 50. Anyway, by using his cruise control to match and estimate Reggie's speed. Reggie calls the cop out and his improvised inadmissible in court ass method before the officer gives Reggie the ticket. Now, this is where it goes from retarded, and I mean retarded as in poorly executed, talk to your mama if you're offended at words and their given definitions. But this is where it goes from a retarded traffic stop and dwells into the land of chaos. So after giving Reggie the ticket, the officer pulls a power move and stands in front of Reggie's car, which was already pulled over on the side of the road, likely with the cop's car behind him. So you possibly have a cop car, what, a uh, cop car behind you, and you got the cop in front of you. Mind you, this is while he's already on his way to drop the kids off at school while he's on the side of the road. I think anybody could understand Reggie's level of frustration, especially given the bogus ass reason for him being pulled over in the first damn place. So, out of frustration for a loss of time and potentially a loss of money for whatever the fine may be, he yelled, get your ass out the way so I can take my kids to school. At the officer. Comes time for Reggie to pay the fine for his ticket. He goes to court prepared to plead guilty and just going with his life, right? Then he realized the judge decided to step his decrepit ass into the scenario. Now, the judge has demanded, demanded an apology from Reggie to the officer for swearing at him. That's right. This fat bastard looking ass dude. Did you just soil yourself? Maybe. <laughs> it did sound a little wet, didn't it, right at the end? John, don't call me Candy, Nicholas, my friends call me Nikki, Bull from Alabama, decided his taser and gun-wielding officers needed some protection from words, and apparently the First Amendment. Now, is that what this is, or is this just an officer of the court making sure his good old boys know that he's on their side as if the diet pale complexion and presumed lack of rhythm weren't enough so now reggie with his upcoming june 4th hearing on the horizon is facing the crossroads apologize to the power struggling cop or face up to 30 days in jail attorneys and other legal officials have noted that while judges flexing some amount of triviality in related sentences like you know being ordered not to contact someone that they're in trial against or an actual offender being ordered to post signs in their yard outlining their offenses, this amount of judicial power flexing is on a whole different level. And we can speculate about this law or that statute to justify whatever side we want to be on, but we really know what this is. This is the good old boys letting you know who is in charge and making sure you know your place and show some respect. Your sense of right, wrong, Fair and unfair will always be tragically skewed. 
because it's necessary to show respect to the people who flex over you uh, for bullshit reasons. But to expect that same respect demanding institution to give you any respect. <laughs> Why? That's that's unheard of. What a silly Negro. <laughs> So again, the man returns to court in June and has already made up in his mind that he's not going to apologize, making arrangements with his mother and the kid's mother to take care of the kids in his absence. But does that penalty really fit the crime? I, I mean, the cop never charged Reggie with disorderly conduct and neither did the judge. I mean, this seems to be nothing more than just a appease me ruling, you know, some, some bow down to my awesome power play and, and reggie wants no parts of it now while i'm a huge proponent of standing against bullshit laws i have to say <laughs> i am conflicted um with having to spend any time in jail because of it because um i honestly would hate for this to create any further issues for the man in terms of his employment his living situation and all of that i mean think about what happened to khalif browder the man spent and lost three years of his life, dissipating in a Rikers jail and ultimately lost his life, all because of misdirected judicial power flexing. So I'd hate for Reggie to see anything like that. I mean, hell, if I can spend a whole weekend in a Chicago jail, uh, story here, <laughs> thanks to a technicality, I can only imagine what being trapped inside the system is like with knowledge that all the individuals who work in it are beholden to the fat ass idiot who put you there in the first place. So while I'm proud of Reggie for standing on principle, I don't think I'd want to do that standing while in a prison cell, uh, deciding if I'll ever eat, take a shower or shit while I'm in there. But maybe the Alabama jail prison system is better than Cook County. I, I, I don't know. One can only hope for Reggie Sec, who doesn't have time between now and his pending court hearing to file a lawsuit in opposition. Now, with all of this, I'll just have to ask a few questions to my peoples. Why is it that the responsibility for civility lies with the person who's being offended rather than with the offender? I, I, meaning, why is it the citizens are ordered to maintain a level head? You know, stop resisting and things will be fine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> while they're being ultimately fucked with. How many of y'all are cool with this level of systemic gaslighting where it's essentially using all methods to trap you in it, leaving you to fend for yourself or spend immeasurable amounts of money and or time to get yourself out of it? And lastly, what would you do if faced with the option of apologizing to the court that seems to be obviously flexing some racist, power hungry muscle or spending the next 30 days in jail i mean it's cool to say what we think for for viral reasons but if we pull back that salacious part and are answering from our collective hearts and homes would you be willing to give up 30 days of your freedom to keep your head i'd love to know your thoughts on this one and now we delve into a story that's part horror movie part bizarre reality show and entirely what the actual hell <laughs> this is the tale of marius gustafson or gustafson uh, a man with truly an unforgettable nickname the eunuch maker now for those of you unaware do, do you remember a show called uh, a game of thrones well if you do, then you may be familiar with your boy Varys, who was a eunuch. And and those people generally are such because their genitalia has been voluntarily or involuntarily removed. And to be honest, I don't know who would be okay with just giving it away, except for your boy Marius, who did. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just saying it, it takes a lot of nuts to remove your peen and, and, and those two. Okay, so we've got Marius Gustafsson, a Norwegian man living in the UK, turned extreme body modification into a lucrative, albeit deeply disturbing business. And for those who are wondering, no, he is not the guy from all those human centipede movies, right? 
I mean, I'd just say if you can imagine Dr. Frankenstein with a, with a YouTube channel, <laughs> then you start to get a picture of what this dude was on. And nah, nah, your boy didn't just dabble in amateur surgery. He went full on mad scientist. I mean, his website creatively named The Eunuch Maker. Please uh, view in your own terms <laughs> and with all of your discretion that you need but it features videos of castrations, peen removals, and even the freezing of limbs. And, and all this was for the low, low price of 100 British pounds, or just a little bit over $125 US for VIP access. That's right, folks, for the low, low cost of a fancy dinner for two at Applebee's. <laughs> now that's plus drinks and apps. You could watch Pure, human horror who needs netflix when you've got that now it's operation if you can call it that had almost twenty-three thousand subscribers and made around three hundred thousand pounds from 2017 to 2021 or a little bit under four hundred thousand dollars us now these grotesque surgeries often took place in london apartments and hotel rooms you know because nothing says romantic getaway like meeting up with random strangers in a seedy motel's mezzanine level conference room in order to collectively view a man's peen being removed please pass the popcorn the man's background is equally twisted i mean before his dive into extreme body modification he was convicted twice of fraud in norway then came a tumultuous divorce in 2016 which according to his lawyer is what triggered his downward spiral and i totally i totally get it i understand i mean you you know the story man meets a woman man marries a woman Woman finds a man's crime to be a bit of a problem, so a woman divorces man, and man has someone cut off his peen and then starts a side hustle of human mutilation. It, it's a tale as old as time. But it wasn't just a financial reward that drove your boy, it was also for, and I quote, <laughs> sexual gratification uh, and consumption. Convicted for removing at least 29 men's Peens, testicles, and other parts. Your boy Mary was also known for creating and eating a thing called testicle salad, <laughs> which is whatever you imagine that to be. Yet, yeah, yes, he, he found pleasure in this madness, leading to a macabre mix of profit and perversion. And I just want to know if we are sure that this dude was not one of Epstein's relatives. I, I mean, speaking of Game of Thrones, Maybe he wasn't as much Varys as, as he was Littlefinger, you know, Lord Baelish. And this all culminated in Mary's arrest and subsequent trial where he and 10 other men pleaded guilty to numerous charges, including causing grievous bodily harm and possessing criminal property. I mean, the court heard how he even auctioned off body parts and dabbled in cannibalism. Because, you know, why stop at one crime when obviously the other arrest that you had for your previous ones didn't teach you shit i mean and his operations were so reckless that they often required emergency intervention with one of his youngest victims being 16 years old i mean your boy marius had to have his leg amputated after his own diy freezing procedure went horribly wrong and i honestly just wonder if the man was just hungry or horny i mean because look i could tell you tons of stories where i've been horngry never removed a leg in the process <laughs> although there, there was that one that one young lady well i have a confession to make too <laughs> really my eyes aren't really green <sighs> You know what else? Oh, no secret. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice in the summer. <laughs> oh, wait. I am glad to get these off. No, not that. Not the tits. Please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even the right color. <laughs> I just always get a kick out of this one. Wait. Oh, 
I got to. I have got to. Oh, please. You're gonna come on. Don't make me. Don't make me hop after you. <laughs> Honestly, it's amazing what some people will do for a sense of empowerment or even control. Look, I, I, after learning about this story, I found that there's a whole subculture, you know, those, those kids who we thought were the weirdos in school, you know, who would poke themselves with like knives or pins. Well, like, yeah, so so it's them, but a little bit more extreme. In your free time, look up the word nullo, N-U-L-L-O, in, in your free time. Don't blame me for it. Just go on. Now, you might be wondering how this horror show finally ended. Honestly, it was with the bravery of one of his own victims who provided crucial evidence to the police that led to the end of this ring. I mean, this hero of a man handed over a USB stick that contained thousands of incriminating messages and videos heavily implicating Marius and his team. The investigation led to his and the arrests of Peter Waits, Janus Atkin, Ian Siokor, I hope I said that right, and if not, I don't care. Stefan Scarf, David Carruthers, Ashley Williams, Damian Burns, now he's the guy who removed Marius's peen with a kitchen knife back in 2017. Peen in 2017, anyway. Jacob Crime, Appleby, and Nurse Nathan Arnold, who removed Mary's nipple in 2019. And I guess the punchline to all this, if you can look for one, is the fact that Gustafsson was sentenced to life with a minimum of 22 years in prison. His legacy, a cautionary tale of how dark and twisted the human psyche can get when unchecked by any sense of decency or legal boundaries. But my question to you is, how do you feel about this whole scenario? Like, I I'll say one thing that I'm taken by is the fact that these were all men like not one woman in a bunch just, just a bunch of peens and balls in random drawers all over dude's apartment and, and flat i guess <laughs> and from what i've read the man understood that he has triggers and, and some of the and the triggers caused him to lose control and somehow this all of this <laughs> seemed to give him that control back now I'm only asking about all this because, you know, I I don't know anyone personally anymore. I used to work with somebody back in the day. But is, is this how trans people, is this what trans people be thinking? Like, do they know that there's something not, I'm, I'm not trying to do any, honestly, I know I was trying to be funny earlier, but this is an honest question. Like, do, do trans people know that, like, what they're, like, like it's like what they're doing is kind of off. Like I'm, I'm saying the the only difference that I can see really is that one person knows that they have an issue in the world that they're living in, while the other makes it seem like the world is the issue, and the world needs to get on their page. Now, I I don't know from either side, but the idea of cutting and some of the reasons behind it are actually all pretty fascinating, and I'm just a student of you know, the, the, the human, of human nature, I guess you could say. So, so it interests me. But there you have it, folks. A story that makes you question everything about humanity, the internet, and maybe a slight nod to the Game of Thrones series. But that is a wrap for today's episode. Don't forget to cruise by our merch shop at theblackmanshow.com for some exclusive gear. It's summertime. We got t-shirts now. Check us out, baby. We, you know, we on the times. Come on. Quit playing. You can also catch me on all the social platforms at Show the Black Man or join the conversation in our Facebook group or page, both named The Black Man Show. Now, if you dug this episode, do your boy a solid with the HBO special. Yep. Help a brother out by smashing that like, subscribing and spreading this word by sharing this with your peeps and friends. You want to drop me a line directly, shoot me an email at tbs at theblackmanshow.com. Now remember to look after each other and treasure those close to you, even, even your enemies, okay? We're all special in the fact that we're here. Until next time, peace, and I'm out.